Hi, welcome to Outlaw Bookseller. Today I want to talk about one of my favourite writers and one of the coolest writers in history, um, who everybody likes to say they've read or would, I guess, to try at some point, or hopefully they do. Um, when I was in my late teens, early 20s, he was somebody you very much read at that age. He was the probably the most important countercultural figure from the literary world of the late 20th century. And um, you can't really escape his influence if you like SF or modernism. And if you haven't read him, you probably should. I'm talking about William S. Burroughs. As you see, I've got my um, Naked Lunch poster there, which is obscured by glare from the um, window. Here at the hideout, we do things um, with a low budget. We're interested in content, not presentation. And the thing with Burroughs is that, as everybody will tell you, his work is very strange. Uh, for example, I don't know where that pterodactyl come from. See that pterodactyl there? Somebody can see it there? Um, very, very strange. There it is. And it just appeared. So that's the sort of thing that happens when you get involved with William Burroughs. So what I'm going to do is talk to you about how you should read William Burroughs, particularly if you want to read Burroughs as science fiction. This is probably the first of a thing perhaps I'll do about that. And the big mistake that everybody makes when they first read Burroughs is that they read Naked Lunch first, because that's the famous one. This is my John Calder paperback of Naked Lunch, which I bought in Cardiff. Um, I think it must have been about 1981. I would have been about 18. Um, let's see, 1982. There you go. I was 19 when this one was printed. And I got this from Chapter and Verse in Cardiff, a, bit of a bookshop in the arcade near to where Spiller's, the oldest record shop in the world, is now. And I can't actually recall if this was the first Burroughs I've read because... What I found out pretty quickly was that it was a tough read. And, you know, this is no surprise. Loads of people will tell you this. But what I did discover pretty soon after is that the way you read Burroughs is to read this book first, which is Junkie. Now, somewhere I've got an old Penguin A format. I don't know. I've just realized I don't know where it is. Um, it's one of my favorite novels. I put it in my top five novels of all time. It's an autobiographical novel. It was originally an ace double, a little paperback you flip over and on the back. There was another novel by a um, DEA agent or the equivalent thereof then, Search, Searching Now Dawkins. And it's basically Burroughs' account of taking heroin in the New York underground in the 40s and early 50s. And I've read this book probably 20, 25 times, maybe more. I read it most years. It's a fantastic read. Very simple, straightforward, anecdotal, wonderful character studies. Um, and a great, great portrait of what the life in underground New York was like back then. And the reason why I'd say read this first is that this is a simple book to read and it introduces you to the world of drug culture and drug language, which is used extensively in The Naked Lunch. So if you're going to read Burroughs, read Junkie first before you read Naked Lunch. I don't want to talk too much about Naked Lunch today. I'll talk about it another time because everybody talks about it. I want to talk more about um, the Burroughs trilogy. Now, a lot of people seem to think that the Burroughs trilogy, those early novels, begins with Naked Lunch. This is a UK first edition hardcover. Um, I've got it bagged, so I'm not going to take it up. But inside, I've got John Corder to sign it for me. John Corder used to call to one of the shops I used to manage and I used to buy books directly from him. Um, great, great man. And I think if you if you're interested in books at all and particularly in underground and modern literature you really need to read um, what the stuff of Caller published and I would recommend his autobiography um, Pursuit which is good but I'd recommend even more another book he wrote called Garden of Eros which I'm going to try and find for you now bear with me because I forgot to get it down bear with me okay I think it's up here behind this garlic I said and yeah there we go This is Garden of Eros, which is a wonderful book that will help you understand, as it says on the cover, the story of the Paris expatriates and the post-war literary scene. This will tell you all about Calder's own work, about Dial Press, the American publisher. Um, this is fantastic. If you want to learn about the original underground writers of the 40s, 50s, 60s, this is the book to read. Absolutely marvellous. I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is fantastic contextual writing for understanding these people. The only thing I would say is that it doesn't say very much about Peter Owen, who in my view was as important as Calder. 
Um, and, you know, he, Peter Owen and John Cole between them, they pretty much invented the avant-garde literary scene in Britain um, post-war. And this is a fantastic, fantastic book. You must read it. So moving on back to Burroughs, um, if you want to read the trilogy, as I say, everybody used to think that the trilogy started with Naked Lunch because there was a book called Dead Fingers Talk. Now, Dead Fingers Talk has been out of print for a long time. And it was bits of Naked Lunch, bits of <clears throat> The Soft Machine. There's an old Paladin from the 80s and bits of <clears throat> The Ticket That Exploded, another Paladin from the 80s. Look at those jackets. They don't make books like that anymore. And that's what's wrong with the book trade, let's face it. So everybody thought that because bits of these were cut up and put into one book called Dead Fingers Talk, that was the Burroughs Trilogy. Oh no, how wrong can you be? The Burroughs Trilogy does not include Naked Lunch. The Burroughs Trilogy is a avant-garde new wave science fiction trilogy. And it set the agenda for the new wave in the UK because Ballard and Moorcock were huge fans of it. And they saw Burroughs as the man who was setting the agenda for the new literary SF in the 60s. So if you want to read the Burroughs trilogy, first of all, read Junkie. Get that under your belt. Read it once or twice. And you'll thoroughly enjoy it. It's a fantastic book. And then you might want to read Naked Lunch. I like Naked Lunch. It's great. Um, it's not my favourite Burroughs by a long shot. I think the trilogy is far far better so what is the trilogy well your best bet now is to move to the current penguin modern classics editions here we go um and this is the first of them soft machine and on the covers covers of the current penguin livery it says the cut up trilogy the restored text um so these are the text the way they're meant to be they've got marvelous introductions by oliver harris who edited a couple of volumes of burr's letters knows his stuff and he puts them in the correct context. And something that he does, he reveals that the correct reading order for these books as intended by Burroughs was The Soft Machine, Nova Express, and The Ticket That Exploded. Generally speaking, we've always thought, and I say we meaning Burroughs fans and SF fans, we've always thought that because they appeared for published in a different order, that we should read them in the published order. But apparently, after you've read Soft Machine, we should read Nova Express, and then The Ticket That Exploded. So what are these books about? Well, they're a trilogy. They're a thematic trilogy. They have one story. The story is very simple. It isn't really pointed out to you. It isn't really expanded on. But if you read my book, 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels, there's coverage in there of the trilogy. I think I cover um, the ticket that exploded specifically. And it tells you what the basic scenario is. The basic scenario is that there is an international gang, inter it's interstellar gang, an extra solar gang of aliens um, called the Nova Mob. And they are these bizarre alien beings and they travel around the cosmos going from planet to planet. And when they get to a planet, they seek to infiltrate and control it and addict everybody on the planet to the means of control whatever will control those organisms whether it's sex death money love what have you so it's all about control it's all a metaphor for the way the Burroughs thought the world was being controlled by the boards and syndicates of the earth as he puts and um in these books the nova mob are pursued by Inspector Jay Lee of the Nova Police, an interstellar, extrasolar gang of cops whose job is to catch the Nova mob and put them in biolo into, into biological handcuffs. Um, I'm just going to read you a little bit from Nova Express, which is a wonderful bit that always sticks in my head. And it kind of sums up what the books are about. If I can just find the piece of text that's early on in the book. And... Let's see. It's almost got a biblical feel to it. It's very, very apocalyptic. Um, and it reminds me rather of the Rastafarians' views about Babylon. And gosh, the introduction in this is absolutely huge. So moving on to it. And it opens with um, a chapter entitled Last Words. Listen to my last words anywhere. Listen to my last words any world. Listen all you bored syndicates and governments of the earth. And you powers behind what filth deals, consummated in what lavatory, to take what is not yours, to sell the ground from unborn feet forever. Don't let them see us. 
don't tell them what we're doing. Are these the words of the all-powerful boards and syndicates of the earth? For God's sake, don't let that Coca-Cola thing out. Not the cancer green deal with the Venusians. Not the green deal, don't show them that. Not the orgasm death, not the ovens. It goes on from there. So it unveils the Nova conspiracy, which is set up to destroy world through control. And it goes from there. And I'm not going to say any more about it because it's something you have to experience yourself. So that's the trilogy. So begin with the soft machine, which means the human body. Nova Express, which has the most straightforward SF narrative. And then the ticket that exploded, which kind of repeats the stuff in Nova Express, but slightly different form. And that's the whole point. These are, these are non-linear, non-narrative books. But you've got the basic narrative of these two opposing forces fighting each other. And you can see how they influence things like um, Scanners by David Cronenberg. Um, it's because Cronenberg was a huge Barris fan, obviously, he made a film with Baker Lynch. So that's the way that you approach the trilogy. So just out of interest, I'll show you a few more editions. Um, this is my UK first of the soft machine. You used to be able to pick this up quite easily. I don't know how hard it is to pick up now. I've had it for many, many years. Nice brown jacket there and Calder and Boyers. Good old John. He was a great guy. Sadly, no longer with us. And this is the Jonathan Cape edition of Nova Express. Cape, the most beautiful books in the 60s and 70s. My favourite um, UK hardcover literary publisher of the 70s particularly. And Nova Express is a great one. I don't have Ticket Exploded in hardcover. Shocking. I must pick that up at some point. But, you know, sadly, these things are uncommon and expensive and hard to find in really good nick. So if you're going to read Burroughs for the first time, as I say, read Junkie to get used to the style and the jive talk before you read anything else. If you read Naked Lunch, pick it up, put it down, just aim to enjoy the praise. Don't try and understand it. The understanding will click and will come to you. It did one day with me. I've been reading Burroughs for six or seven years. Then one day I was just sitting down in a corner of my flat and my Burroughs books were behind my TV. I don't know why. And I just picked one up when I was cleaning behind the TV, sat behind the TV and read it and it clicked. And the way that you read Burroughs just clicked in my mind. And um, I can't really say any more about that because it, it involves things beyond normal consciousness. So as I say, and to put it all into context, give this a read. The Gardens of Eros by John Calder. Um, absolutely. Published by Alma, who've taken on the Calder list. Absolutely fantastic book. Essential for anybody who wants to read about underground literature. So that's the story with the Burroughs trilogy. Make sure you read it in the right order, not the order of publication. Use the Oliver Harris text. Read Junkie first. Get this for context and immerse yourself in the worlds of the great 20th century mythographer. This is Outlaw Bookseller signing off. And remember, don't call it sci-fi. Call it SF.